just when we all thought golf was all controversied out. One of the biggest brands in the world are now suing Costco over their Kirkland Signature iron range. This is huge news. It could end up being the biggest news of 2024. And I can't quite believe that we didn't see this coming because this isn't the first time Costco is it. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson and welcome back to this YouTube channel. Today we're talking about Costco and we're talking about TaylorMade. TaylorMade have filed a lawsuit against Costco because of their Kirkland Signature iron range. Now I'm a huge fan of these irons. I'm also a huge fan of TaylorMade and the P790 range. For me, they were an absolute game changer. So just what's going on with TaylorMade, what's going on with Kirkland and why could this potentially be the opening of a huge can of worms. That's all over it, by the way, for a Kirkland. Oh, yes, please. Now, as I mentioned, this isn't the first time that Kirkland have had issues being sued. 2017, Kirkland, or Costco, should I say, were sued by a Titleist because of the Pro V1 ball, and obviously Kirkland's three-piece urethane Kirkland Signature Performance Plus ball. Could it happen again? Towards the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about a few other clubs that I think potentially could cause Costco a bit of a headache. And we're gonna talk about this lawsuit from TaylorMade because it's big news, it's huge, isn't it? Like, have TaylorMade made a rod for their own backs? And is it a little bit more of a problem for TaylorMade now they've actually addressed it? You see, let me explain. Okay, maybe it wasn't as all over it as what I thought, but there's a very famous saying the imitation is the best form of flattery. TaylorMade maybe don't see it that way, hence this lawsuit, but at what point are they just now really helping Costco with their advertising? Go on. Oh. Because I know a lot of people thought they looked the same. A lot of people, let's just clear this up with the kirky, the ball, obviously. I've actually got, in fact, the two clubs that this video is about. We have, obviously, the Kirkland Signature Iron that we've just hit, but I also have today the TaylorMade P790 Iron. Now, I've spent a lot of time testing both these golf clubs. I've hit them in the studio as well, so numbers-wise, they're more similar than what you might think. However, that's not the whole story because you do sort of get quite a lot more consistency with the P790, I feel like that's generally what you're paying for. And when you put these head to head, you can kind of see where TaylorMade have taken umbrage, can't you? Because um, apart from a speed pocket, they are incredibly similar. But what about all the other times this has kind of happened in the industry? I'm not sure if it happens basically when patents run out. Who remembers and the rig run between the Odyssey number 10 and the TaylorMade Spider and all that? That was kind of too close, wasn't it? But then we look at Costco, for example, and brands are happy to sue them. So very interestingly, and like I said right at the start of this video, is this going to be the last time we see Costco be sued? I'll address this in a moment, but for now, I want to kind of address how maybe TaylorMade have done the right thing in protecting their intellectual property. That's what they have cited in their statement. I'll put the lawsuit below, actually, because I'm not a lawyer. And to be honest, I don't want to say anything that I have no real clue about. But the irons definitely look similar. Is it, however, a drop of the ball from TaylorMade? Because you look at the comment sections on all social medias now, and this is generally what I saw last night when the news broke that TaylorMade were suing Costco for these Kirkland signature irons. A lot of people basically saying, oh, well, if they're suing them for them, they have to be good. Whether or not they can get them off sale, I have no idea. Again, I have no idea about a lot of this. But is it basically TaylorMade saying they are very good, they are very similar to the P790s, and we're annoyed you're doing it for so cheap? Potentially. So let's hit this Kirkland signature ball down this fairway with the Kirkland signature driver that looks oddly like another driver on the market. Oh, yeah. That will do nicely. And I actually love the fact that there are so many brands out there at the moment helping more golfers get into the game. I've struck that so bad, by the way. I do find that's almost a sweet spot for this driver, but I love the fact there's so many brands out there that are helping more golfers get into this game, that are helping golfers buy new clubs for more affordable prices. Although you can't just copy someone's homework, can you? Like I tried that at school and it didn't end well. Is that gonna be a problem for Costco? Not me failing my exams, but 
Costco potentially always being that step behind and just kind of saying, oh, well, that works, let's do that for cheap. I don't know. And to me, it's actually really interesting what this lawsuit is all about, because it's actually about tailor-made complaining about a patent infringement and false advertising. So you can see there, a jury trial has been demanded by tailor-made. I mean, those, those pictures do look very, very similar, don't they? Like, very similar. Huge thanks to Jonathan Wall, by the way, for the uh, article. Love Jonathan's work. And when we do talk about these brands that are bringing golf more to the forefront of affordability, how important does that sound, by the way? I can't believe those words have exited my mouth. But we talk about Kirkland, we talk about Tacoma, we talk about Cali. Lots of different brands that I think are doing exceptionally well. The guys at 11 as well are smashing it when it comes to more affordable clubs. But at what point is copying copying? And at what point is copying taking inspiration? Because I suppose there's a fine line, isn't there? But then if you're gonna sue someone over it, you probably think you're in the right, don't you? So let's... Uh, yeah, see how that one goes. And I guess for anyone more interested in this kind of big lawsuit, I'm not gonna kind of read the whole lawsuit out because that would take forever. It's got a lot of big words in it that I can neither say nor understand, but I will read TaylorMade's statement to you because I think it's really interesting. I actually really like what they're trying to do. They're basically just trying to protect their own intellectual property, aren't they? That's about as big as the words are gonna get for me, by the way. So it kicks off by TaylorMade saying they are proud of all their innovations and technological advances. They've shaped the industry. It's hard to disagree with that. They have been pretty much at the forefront of a lot of information. Excuse me if it sounds like I'm reading this off a script because I don't wanna get it wrong. It is in fact TaylorMade's actual statement. So they go on talking about the metal woods in 1979, move weight technology in 2004 of course with the R7, flight control technology in 2009 and of course launch of the P790 in 2017 but where it really gets interesting is when it says so another company seeks to imitate our products we take it very seriously and take immediate action not only are we protecting our intellectual property but we are also seeking to protect golfers who may be duped and misled into thinking cheaper imitations will perform at the same level as the original. Our P790 irons have been synonymous with distance and forgiveness for golfers of all levels, and this is why we decided to file the lawsuit against an inferior imitation under the name Kirkland Signature Players Irons from Costco and Indy Golf. That's from a tailor-made spokesperson. Very interesting, like they've not really gone into a lot of detail, but I feel like they've gone into enough detail and of course called the Kirkland products an inferior imitation, where this could get really spicy and really interesting. When John Rahm went to live, I thought that was it for kind of golf controversy. I thought 2024 cannot get any more controversial. It's the 2nd of February today. And the really fun thing for me about all this is I don't really have a dog in this fight. I agree with TaylorMade, the P790s were an absolute game changer. So many brands have taken that hollow body design and kind of ran with it. But I also like the idea of a more affordable brand making golf products that gets more people into golf. So realistically, it's a shame we can't all just get on, isn't it? But we have both six irons here and we're about 170 yards out. Which one's gonna get closer? We'll go Kirkland first. We had to finish this out in a straight duel, didn't we? Closest to the pin, ball slightly above the feet. Should just draw in nicely. That one felt really, I mean, that's a Kirkland. And like I have reviewed these, they do feel good. That's front edge of the green. Can't really complain with that too much. And it wasn't the best strike either. Like I said, I've been in the studio with these clubs and they do perform okay. I'm not gonna say they perform great, but they perform okay. You don't have the level of consistency or potentially control with them, but price, money's money, isn't it? So time for the tailor made. It's a good standing that from the Kirkland. We're on the green there. P790. That is an identical ball flight. Which one's going to be closer? This is really interesting because though those are two great shots for me. 170 yards into the wind. You're going to take greens in reg all day. But guys, get in the comments below. Let me know what do you think to this lawsuit Taylor made a filing. Is it going to get dirty? Is it going to get spicy? Or is it going to just going to go away? And I also have another little casing point I want to finish this video on because I don't think this is the last we're going to hear potentially of lawsuits, maybe. So as you can see, the first ball we come to here is the Kirkland 6-iron, and that one's landed at the front of the green. It's actually quite a way short of that flag. It stopped nicely, though, and the tailor-made is all the way up there. I left that out to the right a little bit. It didn't turn as much. Is that the kind of the forgiveness element? That's a lot closer to flag high, 
which one would you want to take there? And I think really interestingly, is this a big deal? Or is this one of them things where companies sue each other all the time and really it never makes the press, but this one has? I don't know. Is it the last time? I ain't sure. And so to summarize, I want to have in my head an idea about what potentially is going to happen with this can of worms that has now potentially been opened. I feel like Titleist potentially opened it back in 2017 when they sued them or countersued them around the Pro V1. But now the Kirkland driver looks very similar to a Titleist TSR2 or TSI2 or TS2, depending on which model you go for. Is this potentially going to be another hiccup in the road for Kirkland? Or could it potentially just be a stroke of genius that gets a lot of people talking? Guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you do smash that subscribe button if you enjoy these golf related videos. And apart from that, I'll see you all at the same time tomorrow. That's the worst drive I've hit in a very long time. Oof.